Over the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about the bass fishing that I'm hoping to do this year, both from the shore and from the kayak, but also thinking about the, the lures that I might use that are suitable for those conditions, for suitable for those marks. So what I've done, I've gone through all of the lures that I've accumulated over the years. And you know what it's like if you're a lure fisherman for any species. You do tend to accumulate a lot of lures. And I'm no exception. I've got absolutely boxes of them. But what happens is maybe you buy a lure and you use it a few times and then it just get, gets filed away, never to be seen again. Or there's other lures that you, you use, they're really suitable for the marks that you fish in at the time and they're successful for you, they catch and you tend to stick with them or at least you, you go back to them and, and use them again. Now while I was going through all of these lures, it started to remind, and I've got lures that go back over 30 year, years, it started to remind me of some of the great sessions I've had with, with those lures, whether it, whether it was from the shore, whether it was from boats when I used to do a bit of boat fishing, or more recent years from the kayak. So what I decided to do is go through my most successful lures over the last 30 years and go through the sort of conditions that they're suitable for. But before I do that, there's one thing I want to say, and this is mainly for those of you that are fairly new to bass fishing and lure fishing for bass. And that is that, from my experience, the most important thing is right place at the right time. And then the lure that you use is just choosing the right tool for the job. And what I mean by that is maybe you're having to cast into a stiff breeze, or maybe you're having to work the lure over very, very shallow rough ground, or maybe you're having to cast the lure into it and get down into a gully, or work the lure over weed or along the edge of rocks or over rocks, or, or maybe you're lure fishing in a surf. But these days, with so many lures on the market, there's, there's going to be more than one lure that is the right tool for the job. But as I said, you tend to, you tend to use the lure that, is, that is, you find most suitable and is most successful for you. But the point I'm trying to make is that just because you see a video on YouTube about bass lures or you read a, a popular bass blog and, and it says about this bass lure, what a fantastic bass catcher it is, just by going out and buying that lure doesn't mean you're going to catch fish. You, you, it, it could be totally unsuccessful for you because you may not be in the right place at the right time. So that is to me is the most important thing and then the lure is just the right tool for the job. So we go through these lures. I've got 10 to go through. Some going back as I said 30 years. But all of these lures that I'm going to go through except one at the time of making this video, are still available to buy. But I'm going to include the one that's no longer in production, and the reason I'm going to in include it, and obviously I'll show you that later, is because there now, thankfully, there is a, a lure on the market that's almost identical. So I am going to include that lure. Right, for the first lure I'm going to talk about is this lure. And what an absolutely fantastic catcher of bass and other species this lure has been for many, many years. It is, of course, the Red Gill, the Red Gill original. And this is an original with the original hook, still made to this day. And this is the 178mm, around about 6 inches. Now, I believe I'm right in saying that this was first made way back in the 1950s. And, of course, apart from being a great bass catcher for many years. It's also famous for fishing over the wrecks when you're fishing for pollock and cod and you're fishing a flying collar type rig with the long 15-20 foot trace. But going back to bass fishing, this lure is still used and still in demand today from the commercial line bass fishermen when they troll for bass. And so when you hear that that they favour this lure and they're doing it for a living, you sort of think in, in why in modern recreational bass fishing, particularly shore fishing, you, you very rarely see anything, anything sort of written about this lure. 
Well, of course, fashions change, and this lure weighs around about 10 grams. And yes, of course, you can use this from the shore. Um, it would be a short range lure because you're not going to cast it that far, far. But on fairly calm days, you can use it. You can cast it out. And a lot of bass fishing is short range anyway. You can cast it out and you can work it around the rocks or you can run it up a gully or you can run it over shallow rough ground. But because fashions change and things develop, there are, from the point of view of shore fishing, there are soft plastics on the market now that will cast a little bit better. But when it comes to fishing from the boats or from the kayak, still an absolutely brilliant lure to use exactly the same way as the commercial boys do, and that's troll, trolling it. And that's the way I, I use these, this lure these days. The same as I did when I used to do a bit of boat fishing, is troll it from the kayak. And you fish it weightless, and it will work literally just, just under the surface, and or maybe about a six inches or a foot down, depending on the speed of the troll. But although you fish it weightless, you can, if there's, if, particularly if there's a lot of loose weed in the water column, you can fish, a, fit a decent sized swivel about six feet from the, from the lure. And what that will do, that will help to trap some of the loose weed that, as it's running down the line to try and stop it gathering on the lure. Because of course, if you get weed on the lure, the bass are just not gonna take it. So yeah. Still available, still an absolutely fantastic catcher. And for those of you that do a bit of boat, uh, recreational boat fishing or kayak fishing, the way I would recommend fishing this is exactly the same way as it's fished by the commercial boys successfully for years, and that's to troll it. Brilliant lure for trolling. Next we got this floating diving jointed plug. Now, I wonder how many of you remember this plug or actually still use this plug today. It is, of course, a Rapala J. This is the Rapala J13, 13 centimetre. And then there, there is the Rapala J11, 11 centimetre. Still available today and at a, at a very reasonable price. Now, back in the, the 80s, late 80s and the 90s, this was the plug to have, the must-have plug and responsible for some fantastic catches and of course still a great catcher today but of course like a lot of these lures fashion changes and other plugs come on the market that might be more suitable over certain types of ground now back then this was the only plug i had so you fished it over a variety of ground of ground but what you had to do at times was improvise. This plug dives from four feet up to say 10, 11 feet, depending on the speed of the retrieve. So if you were fishing over shallow rough ground and you were only casting this plug into say one to three feet of water, you had a little bit of a problem. If you just real, uh, cranked it in, of course it would just keep hitting the seabed. But you had to improvise. And what, what you had to do in those conditions was hold the rod tip up right, really high at an angle and at a speed, a slow speed, so you could stop it diving down and catching the seabed and work this plug and fish those marks. But as I said, other plugs came on the market which, which naturally dived shallower only a foot. You could just cast them out and, and reel them in. So you, you basically stopped using this plug over in those conditions but still really worth having in your tackle box and i still use this today i don't use it over shallow rough ground anymore but what i do tend to use it is if it's from the shore and i've got access to slightly deeper water maybe if you're casting it in a gully and you're running it in the gully with a bit of depth of water run it along the edge of the rock use it and on the kayak if i'm, if I'm fishing over a reef drifting over the reef and casting out in say I've got say about 11 to 25 feet of water I can use, use this plug uh, a great catcher for many years and still a great catcher today cheap definitely worth having in your, in your tackle box the next plug I'm going to talk about is a really interesting one 
And this is the one that I said that unfortunately is no longer in production, but I am going to include it because thankfully there is a, a really good alternative on the market now that is virtually identical. Now this is called a Bass Bullet, for those of you that don't know. It was made by a company called Cox and Rule. And I think it was about the, in the 90s that it came out. They made a few uh, of different weights and, si and different styles. But this one, which is a 27 gram, and another one they made, which is a 60 gram, was particularly made for fishing in the surf. And I've got an original packet here, Bass Bullet packet. And it does say on the back there, the, the, uh, the 60 gram and the 27 gram, we particularly like for fishing in the surf. So that's what it was designed for. And if you look at the shape of it, it's one of these, these days, what they call a, a sort of a pencil type lure or, or needlefish type lure. Um, slightly pear shaped, so very much tail weighted. And designed for distance fishing, distance casting, long range casting. So if you can imagine you're standing in the surf with your waders on, you can blast this out, way out into the surf. And what would happen, it was tail weighted, it was sink down like that, at that angle, but as soon as you started retrieving it, it rises right up and fishes, depending on the speed of the retrieve, just under the surface, or you could skip it along the surface. And that was an absolutely fantastic catcher of bass in the surf, and a great shame that, they, that it went out of production. But anglers that have still got them, and there's some well-known uh, anglers in Ireland that still use, that have got these, and still use them to this day with fantastic effect for surf fishing. So a fantastic surf plug. But now looking at the alternative. Now this one is made by the company Westin, which I believe are a Scandinavian company. And if you look at them, side by side and then look at them like that you can see they're virtually identical this one is uh, advertised as weighing 27 grams exactly the same as the bass bullet but the bass bullet i don't know where they got their 27 grams from because i've weighed it on different scales and it's actually much heavier than that it's more like 35 grams but this one is lighter, it's advertised at 27 grams, but again, I weigh it and I reckon it's near, near 30 grams. So it's lighter than the Bass Bullet. It doesn't cast, because of the weight difference, doesn't cast quite as far as the Bass Bullet, but still a brilliant, brilliant caster and still has that exactly the same action where it sinks down like that. All you do is wind it in, it rises up to the surface and just got a little bit of a rolling slalom action and all you need to do is crank it in. So a fantastic lure for fishing in the surf and, and thoroughly recommended for that type of fishing. Next, moving on to the sort of more modern style of plug. This is a floating diving plug and it's called a Maria Angel Kiss. This is the Maria Angel Kiss 140, 14 centimetres. Weighs 27 grams. And this plug you can use in a variety of situations. It's designed for casting. It's a fan, with tw being 27 gram, it casts really straight, a brilliant caster when there's a bit of wind about. Cast a good good distance if you need to cover a lot of ground. Dives to 60 centimeters, just over two feet. So you can use it in shallow, in shallow over shallow rough ground. And because of its design in slightly choppy water, it digs in really well. Um, so a fantastic plug and I use it from the shore um, I don't use it over very, very shallow rough ground. I use other plugs that will only dive to about a foot. But use it from the shore, 
use it when there's a breeze a bit of breeze about and, and the other plugs just maybe just won't won't cope with that breeze and i need need to get a little bit of a distance uh use it from the kayak it's good for trolling it's good for fish for cast and retrieve on the drift over shallow reefs it's got a f absolutely brilliant sort of rolling slalom rolling action and the other thing about this plug it's got a fantastic rattle in it so just going to pause for the moment and and just listen just listen to how this th this rattles underwater So as you can hear there, it's got plenty, plenty of things to attract the bass. It's got a fantastic action to it and it's got that rattle as well. So uh, another really great catcher of bass that I've found over the years and one at a really reasonable price. Maria, the Maria Angel Kiss 140. Now for a couple of floating, very shallow diving plugs that are absolutely excellent over very shallow rough ground. This is the Tackle House Feed Shallow 128 and this is the IMA Komomo SF125. They both only dive 230 centimetres but you can if need be work them a bit shallower by holding the rod tip up at a little bit of an angle. They've both got a, a lovely rolling action and the, the thing I really like about these plugs is you can fish them simply. You can just cast them out and wind them in and they will catch that way. Occasionally I will fish them differently, I'll fish, I'll mix up the speed of the retrieve or maybe a, a retrieve and, and pause. But as I said, you can, you can just cast them out and wind them in. The differences that I've found between the two is that with the feed shallow, you need to wind it a bit quicker to, to get that action than the IMA. And the other thing is that, that when there's a bit of a breeze, if you have to cast into a breeze, the IMA will cast a, a little bit better, it tends to stay straighter. That's not to say that the, the Feed Shallow is a bad caster. It's not a bad caster, it's not the best caster, but this one definitely casts a little bit better. So if I'm fishing over shallow rough ground and it's calm to, say, moderate conditions, I wouldn't choose to, to fish these plugs in, in rough conditions but calm to moderate conditions, my first choice would always be the feed shallow. I don't know what it is about this plug, but the bass just seem to like it. At least that's what I found. Maybe it's because I use it more often. Other people may have had no success with it, but going back to right place at the right time. So yeah, that's my first choice, and I've had some great fishing with this plug. But fantastic to also have this one if it gets a little bit breezier. But these plugs, of course, are not just only for shallow rough ground. I've caught, particularly on the feed shallow, I've caught fishing this plug on the kayak when I'm fishing in reefs up to 25 feet of water, even though the fact that it only dives to a foot. But of course, bass will come up. It's a bit like troll. We're talking about trolling the, the redgill, which just fishes literally just below the surface. Bass will come up from underneath and, and, and hit these plugs. So they're good for that as well and obviously great if you're on the, on the kayak you, because they only dive shallow you can cast it right towards the shoreline uh, to the rocks and then draw it away. But also, also great plugs for trolling. So I would say if you're looking for two floating shallow diving plugs to fish over shallow rough ground then you won't go far wrong by having these in your tackle box. Now to my most successful surface plug to date. This is the IMA Salt Skimmer and it's, the, it's a Walk the Dog style plug. And for those of you fairly new to surface plug fishing for bass, what Walk the Dog means is that you cast this plug out and then you impart an action. You don't just wind it in, you impart an action known as Walk the Dog. So you cast it out, and while, while you're slowly turning the handle of the reel, you twitch the rod tip slowly, and that puts a, a zigzag action 
on the plug as it walks across the surface of the water and leaves a lovely wake in its path. Now I have tried other very popular and well-known and successful surface plugs of the walk the dog style but I always seem to come back to this one and I don't know why this one is the one that I just had the most success with and I think the other reason I like it is that it's so subtle it's only I think it's 110 mil long and only only weighs about 14 grams but even though it's a, a small plug and, and a fairly light plug it casts absolutely beautiful it stays nice and straight and it's a great caster but because it's so subtle it suits the conditions that I absolutely love to use the surface plug and that is when it's it's very calm it's silky calm and you've got a, a lot of uh, activity from surface activity activity from bait fish and it's it, it's great way to fish for them you can see the the plug just walking across the surface and sometimes you'll see the swirl of the bass that's maybe gone for it and missed it and also see the bass actually take it so it, it's it's a fantastic way to fish for them but this plug of course won't will catch other fish i've caught loads of mackerel in the summer f fishing with this plug in calm conditions so yeah so that is my favorite and most successful surface plug to date now for a really good soft plastic that to use mainly from the shore and that's this one this is the fish arrow j5 inch now i first started using this lure a few years ago but when i first started using it they had two versions they had the fish arrow j5 inch which is this version and then they had the Fish Arrow J 5 inch SW version, which is this one. Now, the SW stands for salt water version. Now, I think I'm right in saying that the, the company that make these no longer make the salt water version. But the only difference between the salt water version and the straightforward J 5 inch version is the stiffness of the soft plastic. Now, if you look at these two, together apart from the color they're absolutely identical lures but an indication that the salt water version had a stiffer soft, stiffer plastic is if you look at the tail and hopefully you'll be able, uh, the camera will pick this up if you look at the tails on them the salt water version is a little bit stiffer whereas the the softer straight j5 inch flops down more indicating that it's a much softer plastic now you could argue that maybe this version may not last as long in salt water at the moment i've found no problem but basically apart from that they're exactly the same lure and one of the reasons that i chose this lure a few years ago was its casting ability for a soft plastic it cast absolutely brilliantly with no weight at all and it's not a uh, from my experience it's a calm calm condition soft plastic you fish it in calm conditions and very very simple to fish you just cast it out and very and slowly wind it in and it works just under the surface and it has a lovely slalom action so simple to simple to use cast it out wind it in but what sometimes what i do is cast it out and when i'm winding and just winding it in just pause and then maybe just let it sink down a bit and then carry on sometimes i try i try that and that works but because this is a, 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 such a great lure and, and has been such a great catcher under the right conditions for me I, i'm not at all concerned and i've been using the the straight j5 inch and find it just as good cast just as well and the action is just as good so just because it's a, a not a salt water version i'm certainly not going to stop using it for that for those reasons but as, as regards how to rig this for our bass fishing there's two options you can either rig it with a, a weedless worm hook 
like that, unweighted. And as regards the hook, it's very, very important to have a wide gape hook. This is quite a wide soft plastic compared to, let's say, the long, slim, let's say like a sluggo, long or a senko. It's quite a wide soft plastic. Therefore, it's important to have a wide gape hook. And the reason for that is that when the fish comes and bites down on it, there's plenty plenty of hook point exposed to to actually hook the fish if you use just use a little ordinary worm hook that would that the shank would run just under the belly here when the fish bites down it's, it's not going to expose much of the hook so that's quite important so that's one option fish it totally weightless or if you want it to maybe work a little bit deeper but it still will work shallow you can fish it with a, a, a weighted weedless worm hook and okay with the weighted it might, might cast a few yards further but either but either way both way ways work so yeah a, a, fan, a fantastic lure for calm conditions i don't use this from the kayak i only normally use this when i'm fishing over shallow off ground from the shore on, on nice calm days and it, and it and it's a really good alternative to maybe fishing a surface plug because it, it works just out, literally just under the surface. Now, another time to fish this is if you go out at night on a calm evening, fishing at night with this, it, it's a great lure that you can just cast out and, and, and just, uh, just wind in. Next, we have the very well known and absolutely fantastic Sluggo, a brilliant sand eel imitation lure for our bass and a lure that has been responsible for some great catches of bass for many years. But not just bass, for other species, such as wrasse, the smaller versions. Um, I fish it for pollock out on the kayak, but it's also a great catcher. It's been a great catcher for other species around the world. Uh, a, a brilliant lure and a very, very flexible lure. Now, this is the six inch version and you can rig the sluggo in, in different ways. You can rig it like this, which is with a weedless and unweight, unweighted with a weedless hook. And this is the 4.0 Texposer hook, which is the hook, the correct hook, size hook to go with the six inch sluggo. So you can fish it like that. Now, if you were fishing this like this from the shore, it's going to be a close range lure and fishing in relatively calm conditions. Because like this, this it only weighs about eight grams, so you, you're not going to be able to blast it out far, and it's not going to be very streamlined when it casts. Or if you want to add a little bit of weight to it to get it get it a little bit further, the company make inserts insert weights that you can put in, and they screw in, and you screw them in in appropriate places, and then trim them off so it's nice and neat. That's another way of adding a bit of weight if you're fishing from the shore and you want to get a bit further or another option is to fish it with a weighted worm hook which would give you just a little bit more weight another, or another option is to go up to the seven and a half inch which is which is absolutely fine for our bass and this really increases the weight the weight of this seven and a half inch just fish with a weedless uh, just rig with a weedless hook like this this weighs around about 20 grams, so a big increase. Now, as regards the way you fish this, again, it's very, very a very flexible lure. You can just cast it out and then just very, very slowly just wind it in. Now, even though it's not a paddle tail lure, it's got such a flexible tail that it doesn't need much of a current to, to, to make it work anyway. So just cast it out, but very slowly wind it in. Another way you can fish it that works is you cast it out and again, work very, very slowly, wind it, but then just give it the odd twitch so it, it darts. Or cast it out and pause so it, it falls down as if it's an injured sand eel. But you must fish it slowly. Or what you can do is you can actually pop a, a jig head on it like that um, this one is 
16 ground jig here, which I jig head, which I mainly fish off, use off the kayak. But you could fish a, a lighter jig head on it, which is the way I fish for when I'm fishing for wrasse with this lure, the smaller versions. But maybe put a, a 10 ground jig head on it, and then if you're fishing from the shore, you could then maybe cast it in, in, into gullies. But the way that I absolutely love to fish this lure, and I've had a lot of success fishing it this way, from, mainly from the kayak, but also success from the lure in the, in the right area, is by fishing it with a jig head. This sand hill imitation jig head goes really well with, this, with the sluggo. As I said, this is 16 grams. So what I do is, if I'm drifting over a reef, uh, close to shore, like a, a sort of rough ground that comes out from the shore, is, and, and what we're talking water, let's say about 10 feet at the shoreline, going out to about 20, 25 feet, is when I'm drifting is to cast it out and let it sink down to whatever depth you want to work it. And then you slowly wind it back, but then you give it, give it a twitch or some double twitches just to make it dart and, uh, and really get that tail working. Now I've had a lot of success on the kayak with bass fishing that, the lure that way. But also with maybe a lighter jig head from the shore is to, as I said, cast it, in, cast it into some gullies and then you can work it through the gully. Just wind it and just give it a, give it a few twitches. So one of my favourite lures, the Sluggo, a very flexible lure, fantastic sand eel imitation and it's been a, a great catcher of bass for me. Last, we have this great lure. This is called the Do Live Stick. Now, I started fishing with this lure last season, and, it, and it's one of those lures similar to when I started fishing with this lure, the Fish Arrow, that I immediately had success with. So although I've only fished it one season and we'll fish it of course again for my bass fishing this year and, hope, and hopefully we'll get something on film. I'm going to include this lure because I had some really good sessions last season with it when I was just experimenting with it really. Now the great thing about this soft plastic is, well one it's action but the other is it's, it's casting ability. Now just rigged weedless like this with a weedless hook, this cast, fantastic. You don't need to do, add anything to it, you don't need to add any extra weight, uh, don't need to use a, a, a weighted worm hook, you just fish it with a weedless hook. And this actually weighs, believe it or not, it's around about 14 grams. So it's a great caster. I'm not saying uh, like a lot of these type of lures, this and the the fish arrow and the, the sluggo that you're going to be fishing this in rough conditions you're going to be fishing this in relatively calm to moderate conditions but a great lure and also uh, another one of these lures that that is is flexible in the fact that you you could you can fish it by just casting it out and then just slowly winding it in um, and it's got a just a, a, a nice little action to it would imitate a sand eel really well in the water or you can twitch it you can cast it out and then just wind and then give it a twitch uh, and wind and give it another twitch so there's another way you can fish it but also another way is to cast it out and then wind it in slowly but then just pause now what happens when you pause with this lure it sinks down like that but it flutters. Got fantastic action when it's just sinking down. It just flutters gently down like that until it hits the bottom. And of course, because you're fishing this weedless, you can fish it, you can chuck it anywhere. You can fish it over shallow rough ground. You can, you can fish it close to rocks, over rocks, in amongst weed. This is the six inch version. And so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's another. Well, unfortunately, I haven't got any. Um, I tried to get some underwater footage footage of this for this video, um, but I just got the wrong colour here. It, it, I've got footage, 
Um, but it just didn't show up well enough. So unfortunately, um, I haven't got any footage to show you. But very modern soft plastic um, and definitely one, one that's worth having. So that's 10 lures of various types to suit various conditions that when I look back I might, if, to my fishing in the past, some of the fishing going back many, many years to more recent sessions, these are the lures that stick out in my mind and, and I think, yes, I've had some really good bass fishing with these lures. Now, of course, I do use other lures and I, and I have caught bass with other types of lures. But these are the lures that some of them I may leave alone for a while, but I always end up going back to them and because they've been so successful for me in the past. And of course, a lot of it in, in lure fishing is, is the right, as I said, the right lure for the job, but also having confidence in, in the lure that you're using. And I've definitely got confidence in these lures. But like any lure fisherman, the experimentation goes on and I, ex I, I experiment with new lures, of course, that I've never used before. And I've been experimenting for the future. Uh, started last season, going to carry on this season with these needlefish type lures that have become very fashionable and very popular these days. They come from the, from the ideas from the US for the striped bass fishing. The needlefish lures that uh, are supposed to be very very good for night fishing for bass so we'll carry on experimenting with those and then of course the the Senko which I must admit I've not really tried that much yet but I'm hoping to try it this season again it's supposed to be very good for fishing for bass at night and then I've got a popper plug that I'm experimenting with I've got popper plugs but I've not been a a great user of them in the past but I like the look of this one again it comes from the US what they use for their striped bass fishing this is a Tsunami XD talking popper it's a, a long casting uh, popper and would be pretty good in, in, in choppy conditions or even in the surf so like the look of that one and I'm going to experiment with that this year and then I always like to experiment with a few metal lures. Metal lures do have a place in modern bass fishing and I do use them under certain conditions when I feel I need them. And so I've got a spoon here that I like the look of and might prove to be a good bass catcher when you want to use metal lures. So the, the experimentation of lures as a lure fisherman goes on. But these lures are lures that I will always feel confident about and always go back to. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.